have some blue lock season two news um hopefully some good news because the leaks along with the re-zero season three doomer news from 122 this notable leaker that's well known in the leaker community has deemed blue lock season to be something that you should <laughs> have zero hopes for i hope it's not the case let's see what he has to say blue lock season two is fast approaching literally less than a month away from airing and it's been so long since the first season almost two years since isagi and that one song was trending everywhere that's crazy bro like two years i think that season right was also when eminence and shadow season one was airing that was my resurrection as i deleted my first channel due to copyright started a new one went into a brand new season of anime blue lock was airing that time and it was pretty good it was enjoyable and there was a lot of tourists that also enjoyed blue locks so i was like huh sports anime shut the fuck up you ambulances jesus christ I can't believe they're ruining my fucking youtube reactions these so-called what's it called necessary workers trying to save lives i'm trying to fucking watch some anime but I hope it's gonna be good. And with season two coming out in a few weeks, I think now's an appropriate time to give you everything you need to know about Blue Lock season two. From the plot to the rivals, just a reminder to give- Don't forget how gay this show is. <laughs> just, just a bunch of pretty boys in spandex skin tight clothing just clashing each other, yep. Rivals, just a reminder to give you the best season two experience. As well as final expectations and predictions before it airs in a few weeks, we'll be talking and analyzing the trailers as well as the movie. Of course, there will be no spoilers. Right, there was the Nagi movie, right? I don't think you guys really care too much. I'm not sure what we're going to do with that movie. I don't even know if Blue Lock is even going to be viable for this coming season because, like, again, the audience constantly changes i don't know if you guys are blue luck enjoyers i'm still gonna try it though weeks we'll be talking and analyzing the trailers as well as the movie of course there will be no spoilers for this whole video as well we're throwing all of that out of the window if you don't I remember anything about blue lock season one it was go big or go home for these teenagers it seems like any minute any person could be eliminated and that is the exact same case here for blue lock yeah any any time someone can get an eliminated literally this guy replaces mr superhero Mr. Kurosaki Ichigo looking ass superhero with the straight shot. I was built up to be one of the most important like side characters along with Isagi. Motherfucker got off screen. He wasn't a hero. Just like Baro realized I wasn't the king. And we have pink frosted tips coming in and... He looks pretty menacing. Same case here for Blue Lock Season 2, but instead of one person, it's all of Blue Lock. This is what Ego says at the end of Season 1, because the Japanese president Bald. wants to shut down Blue Lock, there will be one final match with Blue Lock's lives on the line. So all of Blue Lock need to fight in order to survive, literally do or die, their final destination. Woo. It ain't happy moments anymore, it's now a literal fight to the death with their career. What do you guys think about this green aura? I saw some motherfuckers on Twitter say that's crazy that the promo Vader picture has Isaki with this fart aura. I'm like, damn, never really thought about it like that. You are right. Stinky doo doo aura. There's on the line. And it's that intense for these teenagers. We've seen so many players crash out from failing blue lock because soccer is their life apparently, and this is the only way. Yeah, this kid. Oh, I. Fuck this kid, by the way. I do not care about this kid's backstory. That shit was whack. Fuck you and your poor siblings at home. You are a fraud. You literally didn't matter throughout the entire season. Then shut up for a couple episodes with some weak ass backstory. Get the fuck out of my face. You think we care? It's all about being an egoist. Cry all you want. And this guy, Kurosaki Ichigo, bro. What happened? I'm wasn't the hero. What? what this guy's just thrown off. Is he gonna have a crazy character redemption arc? Is he gonna go 180 and become a villain? Like, is he just gone? There's no way that this character gets built up in the intro. And, and then he just has no relevance in the future. I refuse to believe that. Life apparently, and this is the only way out of the mud. Isagi Oichi is our main character who has experienced an emotional roller coaster, to say the least throughout Blue Lock. I've never seen anyone go through the five stages of grief over a soccer game. Isagi has put his all- Soccer is that fucking important, that's right. All into every single game, and it's paid off. He's now made it this far into the top 35. Isaki is a very... He's a pretty good main character, don't you think? Like, time after time, he's forced into these shitty situations, and he's a pretty good problem solver, right? 
how much is it how, how much of it is like a plot armor i'm not sure but he is extremely competent always figure out exactly what is necessary and what was his main powers it was like almost like this omnipotent vision right just having 360 degrees just like awareness in the field being able to predict what people are gonna do right <laughs> the puzzle pieces devouring people right he even has like his own strikes which is like a no catch shot he's fucking sick and that's where we are right now for season two we reduced the original player count from 300 all the way down to the last 35 damn players. most of these 35 players we have seen you got your bachuras you got your nagis your baros and even though we've been following isagi and the others all this time oh my god bro oh like gagamaru is sick gagamaru i love this guy right over here him dude it, his thing is like always like <laughs> like like it, there's like a pass too far but he dives super fucking long i think he can jump really high or something right and like he gets these crazy clutch last minute like saves or goals it was pretty sick um uh, who else is there this is the kid that i said fuck his backstory isagi the goat temple monk i have no clue how he's still around like he is seemingly just a jobber that's still around. We haven't seen him devour anyone just yet, but I hope he fucking makes it. Back here though, uh, who are these dudes? We got fucking Kurosaki Ichigo the fraud, right? Um, this guy was just a backstabber, right? This fucking rat. He sold us out, but there's a bit of redemption for him at the end. This guy is just like the ultimate defender, right? <laughs> I forgot. That's, that's some crazy fucking eyeliner on this guy. Oh my god, the makeup is on point for him. But like, yeah, that, this guy was like a very aggressive defender type, right? And then the guy on the right... I don't remember the guy on the right. I'm sorry, he is not very significant. I, I do not remember this guy here. Soggy and the others all this time and seeing what they can do. It's not just them fighting. There are so many new characters that Let's are go. added into this new arc. You just know it's serious when someone's first dialogue is talking <laughs> about that's so all. Who even says that? <laughs> this, this guy's design, like, kind of reminds me of, like, Vegito, like, in terms of just, like, a hairstyle, I guess, but this guy's got mad aura. Say what you will about the pink frosted tips, right? His entrance at the finale episode, it was unexpected. It was like, where the hell did Ichigo go? Oh my god, did you actually replace him? First dialogue is talking that's about that's old. all. Who even says that? This arc is really about to have the best of the best duke it out, all in order to survive. Even in blue lock, players are going to have to go against each other as they have to have a full team in that final match against the U20 Japan team. Okay. A full team means that they are going to have these strikers play in the defender spots, the goalkeeper spots. <laughs> the goalkeeper spot is the funniest shit because like the whole concept of blue lock is everybody is supposed to be a striker but then you still have to have someone play goalkeeper you know emon i think that his name i always called him lemon right because i just saw that letter the i as an l i think it's funnier to call him lemon than emon but lemon was sick i enjoyed lemon he had a really hype scene too where it was like this last minute like clutch situation where it's like oh my god they're gonna score oh my god they're gonna score and he clutches so hard his eyes like he fucking locks and you can see his aura and the midfielder spots because you can't just have a formation with all 11 of them charging in so every one of the 35 players remaining are rivals fighting for a starting spot and their positions and yes, we sir. already know blue lock be making every single person rivals this Barro. <laughs> i love this guy bro uh, the role play as the king of some sort of fucking feudal monarchy is amazing. Donkeys! And then Isaki calls him a donkey. That episode, that arc, when Baro got corrected as he realized I wasn't the king. And then figures out that, no, 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 I got something new. And he had this like new style of dribbling, which is like very choppy lightning like black red flashes right rivals this arc has genuinely been hyped to no end i feel like in every anime there's always one arc that manga readers have been waiting to get adapted yeah you know, like the shibuya incident or like re-zero season three so this upcoming arc for blue logger tell me it's one of those adapted. yeah this is that arc so you already know how hyped this matchup is going to be you have the blue lock boys who we've been following this whole time all fighting for <laughs> what the fuck is that tongue boys movement? who we've been following this Wait. whole time oh my god 
He really is the zesty demon, bro. <laughs> what is that tongue movement? All fighting for their lives, and then the current best U20 players in all of Japan. They're letting us know how fierce this battle is gonna be, and on top of that, they're adding... Wait, is that boss music? Woo! That's the big brother of the guy... Fuck, I forgot his name, but he kind of like was... You know, he was one of the final bosses in season one, right? And he, his goal is to surpass his big bro, Rin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this guy is like his big bro, who is like the actual real deal. The Japanese prodigy, Ito. <laughs> there, what, why was there any reason to just do this, though? <laughs> it's for the ladies, bro. As much as you think Blue Lock is for the boys, I think there's a lot of girls that watch these kind of shows too, you know, a little bit of fan service for them, why not? The Itoshi Sai is being added on to the enemy team as a Sai. plus one. This is the equivalent of Sai. realizing they have a smurf on the enemy team. Oh shit. One of the best 11 players of the new generation is hired to go against Blue Lock. And when you do a little investigation, you know that Sai is Rin's brother. I know mm -hmm. stellar analysis, Hyrio, but you're telling me the guy that gave our main... Yeah, and this guy just like... His introduction just scaled the power scaling to another level. He was so fucking OP. It truly felt like we got, we just realized that the world is truly big. And this guy is probably nothing compared to his big brother either, right? Character so much trouble has an older brother who is already considered one of the best players. It's over. We got an mm -hmm. FF. It's hard to talk about him without going into any spoilers, but Itoshi Sai has been hyped up since the first episode of the series. This is the Shanks of Blue Lock. That's true. That is true. He was in the earlier episodes. Wondering what's Blue Lock all about. He's just kind of looking for fun. Damn. He, I don't know like how strong he's going to be. But like in these kind of shows, in the first couple episodes, they have a tendency of just like introducing a super fucking OP person. Just to hang out for a bit, then leave and realize that, oh my god. That dude was on that level? Block, just make him nonchalant. Itoshi Sai has been hyped up to be the big boss final obstacle in Blue Lock's way for the U20 match. So we just know he's about to pull off some ridiculous plays only seen in anime. Mm -hmm. When we talk about one Itoshi though, we have to talk about the other. Isagi's biggest rival throughout all of season one has been Itoshi Rin. Yep. Rin ever since his- The biggest rival? Probably. Actually, don't know. The more I think about it, there's obviously many different little arcs here and there that focuses on, like, different, like, quote-unquote rivals. I would think that Bara was, like, you know, Isaga's rivals for that arc, but if you think about the biggest rival, yeah. Yeah, probably. This Rin guy was next level. The introduction was on another type of timing, of flexing in front of everyone so fluid, with his skills right? hitting two balls in the air. Seeing that the Like, his entire thing is fluidity and how smooth everything is. He's very flexible. Only right reaction is to be surprised, but I'm afraid he was cooking something far worse. Rin had final boss choir music playing whenever he received the ball. And I've watched plenty of anime to know that when some music like that starts playing, yeah. it's going to result in something crazy. Rin has always been the obstacle in front of Isagi's way. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I remember this dude. This guy was a muscle head that is very, like, uh, insecure about himself, but, like... The thing is, he's super strong, like a fucking bull. And then the guy on the left, this guy is just a fucking L'Oreal, like fucking shampoo commercial guy. Uh, something about like always being elegant, right? Always trying to look fancy and like sophisticated. And it's still that way at the end of season one. And even though they are on the same side of Blue Lock, they are still rivals just as much as they are teammates. Their dynamic of playing with each other was explored. Oh, that's right. When Rin took Bachira. Did he? The Bachira was an opponent for a bit. Bachira is actually crazy too, though. Especially because he has the power of Schizo. A little bit in the World 5 match, and that's how Rin was able to score. So we could definitely look forward to a lot more of that. And just their rivalry in general, as it's been built up this whole time. Rin beating out Isagi, Isagi coming back for revenge, mm -hmm. and then Rin picking Isagi to join him as the only ever- That's right, this is it. And then we went into the finale episode where it was a bunch of- dudes from all over the world right and they were doing some english shit and i sorry man the english made me start laughing and i realized it's very rude
player to surpass him in blue lock but there was only one character that was hyped up at the end of season two with a super villain entrance zesty Shido demon you say is the third rival Shido on this Ryusei. list i don't even think you need spoilers to see how big of a threat he is his first interaction with him yeah just look at his hairstyle bro just look at his haircut like this guy is looking like a fucking the main antagonist out of fucking Yu-Gi-Oh or something you know just this entire like drip fuck where'd he go come on he is his first interaction with the main yeah. character was trying to kick his head off when they oh, took true. all of Isagi's budget and put it into this guy's <laughs> and wait 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 let's see that frame again yeah, it looks a bit derpy here, right? Yeah, the budget, we have to min-max it. Even this jersey is not really fitting properly. He's budget and put it in... Yeah, it's gotta go to this guy. They gotta hype him up. Shido Ryusei. Again, just... This motherfucker look like he's straight up like a fucking... Uh, children's cartoon villain from Yu-Gi-Oh! To this guy's singular aura? You already know he's gonna be a menace. He entered the room and had glowing eyes. I wonder, and you see the pink aura, right? Like, I love his design. Everything is very hype, but I wonder if he's the real deal. Quite often, you introduce a new villain and try to hype them up, but they just get washed after one character arc, and then you forget about him. I, I hope there's some staying power for this guy. Is he as good as Rin? Is he better than Rin? This is a great indicator that you know some anime BS is about to happen. Shido was also the one who eliminated Kunigami, mm. who we saw before was a pretty prominent striker. Yes! He was, like, one of the most important, like, side characters in the earlier episode. Then he's gone. And I'm like, what? And quick side note, why was Rayo talking about Kunigami's not fit to be a striker? He wasn't the kind of person who could become the best striker in the world. We're talking about Kunigami? Bro, Rayo, who the- He's shit talking. When he's been putting up a Mickey Mouse performance at this point in time. This, this guy, I don't know how to feel about him. Maybe the, the author is cooking with him. He'll be essential later. But to me, this guy is just rich motherfucker that got lucky and found Nagi and they had some dreams to share together and that's shown in the movie and then <laughs> Nagi left his ass because Isagi just better and Rayo got mad and he did, you know, start to make a comeback later on, which I do respect, but what are they cooking with this character? I'm, we saw him not get picked by Nagi and then was picked up as scraps by Kunigami and Chigiri. Mm. This is the equivalent as getting picked last at dodgeball. Nobody wah, wants you, bro. Wah. And then again, it happened to him. How are you gonna let that happen twice to you? Rayo didn't get picked and then started to play the woe is me victim card after he lost. So for him to say Kunigami was not fit to be a striker walking in with a 0% on-screen win rate, it's just crazy to me. Getting- It is kind of- it, the audacity, I guess, right? For someone so mid to just say shit like, yeah, he, he's not a good striker. Well, that's like the equivalent of motherfuckers chirping on Twitter, just shooting on LeBron, saying, ha, Mickey Mouse frame fraud. On screen win rate, it's just crazy to me. Getting back to Shido, though, this devious smile was the only thing we've seen in the season two trailer. Not that gonna tongue. lie, if I see this, I'm running for my own safety. So we already know Shido is about to be a menace in season two, but what about the actual main rival? The U20 Japan team is the big bad of this season and the only obstacle in front of blue lock's way obviously i can't go into detail since there are spoilers so like this guy is the strongest in japan can't go into de i can't go lock's way like this guy are you telling me that this dude is like the strongest in u20 japan i'm not really sure what this guy's all about but based on the little scruffles he has and the colored hair, he looks definitely older. Oh, he also has heterochromia, different eye, eye colors, but is he the strongest? Hey, obviously, I can't go into detail since there are spoilers, but going off the trailer and what we know already from season one, we already know they have an established team with every single player specifically made for their positions. So while Blue Lock has to scurry around wondering who's going to be defender and goalkeeper, the U20 already has that advantage because who's they have the specific goalkeepers and defenders. And okay. to help y'all too, for the season, I do think it's important to pay attention to the U20 Japan team. Kay. Again, they are main rivals and enemies. When I read the U20 arc originally, I speed ran through it and didn't really pay attention to the enemy team. And I really wish I did because getting to know these characters and their abilities is crucial. Paying attention to the then. U20 team specifically is crucial to a better season two experience. I do say this because in season one, there are full teams where some of the characters we could seriously care less Baru. about. Like Team X, we only remember Borrow from it. The trailer yeah. also shows us one character I do want to highlight, and that's Oliver Aiku. Mm. Granted, it was only two seconds, but Oliver. the fact that he's the only one shown from the U20 team, excluding... I mean, if his name is Oliver, 
I don't know. This this motherfucker got a white name. He fucking half Japanese, half white. He's probably gonna be like a next level fucking athlete, bro. It was only two seconds, but the fact that he's the only one shown from the U20 team, excluding Sai, you already know he's about to be that guy. Take right. every compliment I said about Sai, Ren, and Shido and apply it to this guy. Just okay, so he is like the guy. He is like the number one so far up to like season two content. Who knows when he gets power crept, but. He's, he's sick. Humanly, you would think he's a main character with how much hype he's getting. Again, I won't talk about what he does because of spoilers, but knowing that he's an important character and that you should pay attention to him will would definitely be good for your season two watching experience. Now that you're caught up on the plot and rivals though, we can really get into the meat and potatoes about our expectations about season two. Not very good, right? I don't know how credible that leaker is, but like, ah, uh, they're like, don't have much expectations for a blue lock. And I'm like, really? Come on, man. Of course, these are the must talk about topics. Things like animation and pacing. Also taking into account both season one and the movie. Just expectations all around. So what can we expect from season two? I think plot shitty CGI, min max choppy animation wise everything we talked about like the rivals the story the plot everything like that blue lock has done good staying true to the manga as well as delivering on the hype moments so i don't think any cutout content or pacing would be an issue for this season this is good because season one kind of suffered from this especially towards the end of the season the world five match was speed ran in i think like three minutes and then I'll yeah, it was kind of just, I don't know, I, I, I thought that they're trying to give us a little teaser of how big the world stage is and how weak we are, but it, it, would, it did just come out of fucking ev just nowhere, right? Season, the World 5 match was speed ran in I think like three minutes, and then a lot of players got off screen. So yeah, there was a lot of pacing issues towards the end of the season. That was because there was 24 episodes for season one. If you don't remember as well, this is a 14 episode anime season. Okay. Super important to know because one they core. could spend a lot more time focusing on less episodes so quality increases take that with a grain of salt because the animation however was the biggest problem in season one as well as somehow the was it that bad i'd have to go back and check those episodes now that i'm trying to be more aware of like you know uh, just overall usage of cgi and how fluid the animation can be now i think i have a more <laughs> i don't know or culture taste on how to differentiate bad animation and good animation because before everything just kind of looked the same to me the movie there has been a lot of talk of them saving their budget for season two or okay. spending a majority of time on season two that's why the movie lacked a little in terms of animation and adaptation but even with that being said unfortunately i personally don't think the animation will change or improve that much wah, there has wah. been a quote-unquote leak about that's what I'm talking about. This is the leak 122. Uh, blue lock or just fall animes in general. And every leak should be taken with a grain of salt. True. But it did say to not get your hopes that's up. That's pretty much it. That's blue exactly it. Two. Of course, that's talking about the animation and adaptation. And basically saying that it's not going to be what we think the animation should be. Or the improvements that usually come with a second. Ooh. What was that? Hold up. Hold up. Second. How do I do this? Boom. There was a... Uh... What we think the animation should be, or the improvements that... This scene, I was like, okay, so like, motherfucker is standing up to, you know, Rin. So, okay, that's good to see, that's good to see, but in terms of the actual animation here, is this is just like a still frame, right? With the fucking wind part, like wind move. It's just, it's just a ball fucking spinning, and you just fucking add the little wind shit. That's, that's not fucking animation. Right, it's a fucking PowerPoint slide. And then uh, uh, leading into it, let's look at this. This scene, uh, this is CGI, right? Yeah, yeah, this, <laughs> this is CGI, right? Yeah. The, the footwork, oh, I'm not too sure. This is, yeah, hmm. I mean, it looks pretty, still frame, but when it all starts to move together, it might seem wonky. The animation should be, or the improvements that usually come with a second season of any anime. And literally, as I'm making this video, a trailer came out for season two, so oh. now we can analyze and share my thoughts on it. I'm not gonna lie, this is what my face looked like when I saw the trailer. The animation is, like I said, more or less the same as season one. The same- <laughs> The use of the CGI 
Oh no! Oh no! Look at the feet! Oh, this is some lazy ass shit, right? You don't want to show the whole character to limit the amount of fucking resources. Like, you just show the bottom fucking half, the legs, but even that doesn't CGI. Then you have a fucking shitty ass model looking like a fucking Sims character from fucking PS1 animation. <sighs> Maybe 122 is right, guys. I'm I'm worried. I'm worried now. The same CGI choppier movements. It hasn't even been a day at the time of this recording, and the memes and still frames have a. <laughs> it's the memes. <laughs> Blue Lock characters trying to throw a kick this season. Blue Lock fans expecting good animation. Oh, it's 8 Bit Studios! No! No! It's the studio that fucked up your regular Magic High School. This is a studio that just. Mid Tensor season three. Oh no, the studio. Oh fuck. Did they do season one? Oh no, what else is there? Hold up, hold up, hold up. You versus the guy she told you not to worry about. Yo, are these the same characters? You seen this shit? Right is season one, Rin. Left is. Rin with the Y, R Y N. What the fuck is going on? And still frames have already hit everywhere. It's also important to keep in mind, although better than season one, the literal movie for Blue Lock didn't have that much of an overall improvement for animation. But even though there's a lot of complaints going on about the animation, I'm still really hopeful. I think you guys should know going into season two, the first season as well as the movie do the really good parts really well. For example, Isagi's goal Ooh. against Team B was really good. The game of the Sakuga moments, right? Whenever there's really hype moments, they'll fucking, you know, turn the budget on. So, you know, maybe the moments that will really count will, in season two, will also do well. The game of tag, all of the important moments that we know and love were yeah. done super well. So even though overall, I don't think the animation will improve, we'll still have the problems overall with the CGI and or just the Roblox look. <laughs> what is this meme? Oh, yo, Baro's cheeks though. You see Baro's cheeks over here? Look at this donkey. Oh, sorry frames the moments that are important i think the animation or adaptation will be good for that because we've constantly seen that from both season one and the movie we've also seen some interviews about blue lock season two talking about how the u20 game itself took a lot of their time they okay. put a lot of effort into it and considering they that's good right that i mean <laughs> <laughs> how much what what is it when we first started the voice recording yeah I'm sure the voice acting will be great. I'm worried about the fucking animation, but they have put everything into drawing the under. Wait, okay, okay, okay. When we started the voice recording for the second season, we were told by the original creators that they had put everything into drawing. Okay. All right, I hope there's a lot more drawing than CGI. Considering they haven't shown us a single bit of the game yet, they probably want to save it as a surprise, as okay. well as just save the budget for the game. I think no matter what, we are still seeing an anime adaptation of one of the best arcs in Blue Lock, maybe Hype. even sports manga in general, so I'm still happy no matter what. I treated this video more as a recap, reminder, and discussion for season two. That was helpful. As well as just my thoughts on what to expect based on the trailer and movie. I really, really want to know your thoughts on season two, if you're excited or or not i am pretty excited for season two and as a reaction channel it doesn't matter if the anime is good or bad if it's good we glaze if it's bad we farm the hate right it doesn't really matter we'll make fun of it just like tower of god season two um the based on uh, and we will check out the trailer too i just haven't gotten the english subs yet i'm not sure if there has been a trailer with the english subs just out yet but the whole premise of season two seems pretty hype right it's going to be one of the best arcs of Blue Lock, if not sports manga, which is a crazy thing to say, but what the fuck do I know? I've never read the manga, so my expectations are very high. I hope Zesty Demon pops off. I hope we get to see fucking Kurosaki Ichigo back. I hope we get to see more Isagi devouring shit, and that's going to be pretty much it. Please go give Mr. Hirio. Here's the link to the video. Go check out his channel. Like the video if you did, and I'll see you next time.